Hi, right, Tim. Hey, how's it going? Good stuff. Uh, first of all, congratulations on a brilliant performance, but uh, I think the biggest takeaway from the fight was there was an exchange verbally between you and your opponent in the third round that was overheard by the cameras. Um, pretty heavy stuff. I was just wondering if you could explain to us what was said and why it was said. Man, I, I didn't really, I didn't say that for anybody else to hear because uh, I don't know the whole story. I was uh, messaged on Facebook with, by, uh, I don't want to name any names, but a long message with some pictures and some Snapchat um, back and forth between, between Jordan Espinoza and another girl. Um, pictures of her with choke marks on her neck. And uh, again, I don't know the whole story and I didn't want to, it wasn't something I wanted the whole world to hear. I wasn't trying to, that wasn't my, that was supposed to be between him and I. I didn't know the camera was, or the mic was going to pick up on it. But uh, it was kind of disturbing, the whole thing. Um, I have a daughter. So uh, this was the only fight that's, that I've had out of all my fights that was personal. Um, it was hard for me to, to maintain my cool. It was hard for me to, to keep my cardio in check because of it. Um, I don't want to go into too, too much details. But uh, again, it was, uh, it's not something I'm proud of to say that everybody could hear. But again, I'm, I'm glad that it's out there. And I'm glad, you know, if it's true, I don't know, again, I. I that's why I didn't say anything on the internet because I don't know. I know people lie, um, but it it was pretty disturbing the things that I was messaged and the pictures that I that I was that I received. So um, uh, that's all the further I can really go into it, you know. To be fair to you, you didn't mention it at media day. You didn't bring it up pre-fight, and I think the reason the camera picked up on it was because you were literally right next to it against the fence. Um, you said that this was personal to you. In the end of round three, you were also rubbing your blood into his face. Is that related? Uh, well, that was that was my coach. My coach said, "Your blood is going right in his face. Use it." So uh, he's smart. Uh, it worked. It helped. Um, I'm, I'm out here trying to win. Whatever it takes, at all costs, in the in the legality and in the rules, whatever it takes. And at the uh, the very end of the fight, big aggressive flurry, threw an axe kick at him on the ground. Again, I'm not trying to harp on this and make this a big story, but is that because you'd heard this stuff and you really wanted to send him a message, or was that just the way it played out? I mean, I, I wanted to hurt the guy. This is the first time I've ever fought somebody that I wanted to hurt. Um, I wanted to make him pay a little bit. Um, I want to win either way. I've never had – I don't do this to get aggression out. I, I do this because I like to fight. I enjoy it. I love my job. Uh, I'm a company man. I, I've been in this. I've been in the UFC since 2012. Um, I've never had any issues with the promotion, um, with any of the bosses. Um, that I'm easy to deal with. I'm easy to get a hold of. Um, and uh, I, I let my emotions get the best of me a little bit because of because of the messages that I received. And uh, that's something that I'm going to have to work on. It's something that um, I'm going to have to go back in camp and and work on because I, I can't I can't let that happen again. I can't let things outside of the fight dictate how I'm feeling in the fight. And uh, that's something that personally I need to work on. Last thing on this subject for me, do you have any interest in hearing his side of the story and talking to him? Or is that something that you've just, you'd rather not even go into that? Yeah, I mean, if, if he wants to, I feel so bad because this, again, it's not something, because I don't know the whole story, you know what I mean? And, and he's right, he even said that. And when he said that, I, I even thought about it at that point. Um, but I was trying to have a personal conversation with him. and. Um, which isn't, isn't something I should be doing anyway. I should be focusing on the fight and winning the fight and uh, the things that I can control. And uh, I, I let my emotions get the best of me. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm an old dog in this sport, but I still got a lot to learn and a long way to go. And, and I'm still here and I'm going to get better and I'm going to get smarter and uh, I'm going to keep, keep doing the right things. Moving on from that, it was a very dominant performance. It was a very good performance. Just generally, how do you feel about it? How do you feel that you showed tonight? I want to be happy with the win, but uh, I didn't like the way the fight played out. I didn't like the way that I felt during the fight. Uh, but again, I think that was, I'm an emotional guy, man. I'm, I could cry right now. Uh, I'm away from my daughter being out here for a week. Uh, I, I love the fighting. I, I, I enjoy it so much. To have a, a negative light put on it because of this, it takes the fun out of it for me. It, it ruined this fight for me. Is that something you think in the future... I mean, it's such a unique situation, right? So I can't say it's going to happen again, but is that something that you think, if this ever popped up again, you'd be like, oh man, maybe I shouldn't even take this fight. Should I should avoid incidents no. like this. No, never that. I'm, I'm here to fight. The UFC says this is the guy you're fighting. That's the guy I'm fighting. That's what I'm here to do. Um, I'm here to make money. Uh, the reason why I get the fights that I get and the reason why I've stayed in the promotion being inconsistent and having three losses in a row is because, uh, I'm a, like I said, I'm a company man. They, they know they can call me. They know I'm going to show up and make weight 
every time. They know I'm going to come, fight hard every time, no matter what. And uh, I like to be the guy. I like to be the guy that the UFC can rely on. Um, and I want to keep being that guy. Negative attachment aside, it was a great performance, and you should be happy with it. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Tim Murray. Uh, did you feel Jordan was uh, slippery in there? <laughs> Man, I, again, I, I hate being the guy to say things in the cage, but it wasn't like it was the third round where I felt like he was slippery. The very first exchange, I put him up against the cage, and whatever was on him was on me. I was trying to wipe it off on my shorts. Um, again, I'm not trying to call anybody a cheater. People sweat different, I guess, but. Uh, that's, that's another thing I'm going to have to work on. I, I can't focus on, I can only focus on what I'm doing and, and what my coaches are saying. And, uh, you know, me running my mouth in the cage is, uh, it's, it's not a good look. And uh, it's just something I'm going to have to work on. I'm, I'm not perfect. Uh, I still got a, a long way to go. And, and that's something that, uh, that's something I can get better at. Just like fighting, I, I, can, I can work on that kind of thing too. But, uh, yeah, he was, he was slippery. He was hard to hold on to. And um, it was first round. And uh, you rolled with a couple of head, like high kicks in, into the takedown. Did you know that was something you could take advantage of? Because you seemed to time that pretty, pretty well the whole fight. Uh, no, that was all James Kraus. We, we worked switching to southpaw and shutting down his jab because he's a heavy jab-handed fighter. And um, I even said that in the pre-fight interview. And, um, you know, maybe he heard that and, and he made adjustments. But uh, as soon as that head kick started coming, coming at me, James Kraus told me to switch my stance, close the stance up. Uh, he was kicking too high anyway. But uh, when you're pitching a shutout and the only thing they have is, is something big like that, uh, you have to make adjustments. But uh, again, that's all from my corner. That wasn't me. Uh, I'm just, I'm out there taking orders. And then uh, look, moving forward, are there any names you're looking at? We've had, we have a couple other flyaway fights on this card or, or when are you were looking to get back in there? Oh man, I want to get, I feel like I, I, didn't, I didn't get the performance that I wanted personally. I felt like I, personally I wanted something more. Um, and uh, any of these guys, I, I don't want to call anybody out. Uh, there was a time where I felt like I was at the top of this division after the Ultimate Fighter and fighting Demetrius Johnson, but I had three losses in a row after that. I'm at the bottom of the heap here. Um, guys on my season of the Ultimate Fighter, Kai Kara France, those guys are killing it right now. Uh, I'm just lucky to be in here and get the fights that I'm getting. So uh, whoever, whenever, next week, the week after, the UFC knows they can call me, I'm ready. Hey, it's him right here. Um, I just want to ask you briefly, at what point in training camp were you, did you receive those messages that, you know, how long have you been aware of it? Uh, so it was strange because uh, it was on my Facebook, but it wasn't my regular messages because I wasn't friends with the person. But I saw like a little red one up in the top of my thing. I, I clicked on it. It was a big, long thing. And it was a, it was a female. So right away I gave it to my fiance. I was like, oh, read this. And then, you know, I could tell she was choking up about it. Um, but, you know, people say things, people lie, uh, but it's not like Jordan has enough money to where this girl could be out trying to get money or anything. And uh, she didn't have any reason to, to message me, really. We don't know each other personally. And uh, it was on her face. It wasn't like she, she just sent me the link of, of this that she had already written out. It was on her Facebook. And uh, again, it's five, six years ago, it wouldn't have bothered me. Really. I mean, obviously, it's not good, but I have a daughter. I have a five-year-old daughter. And that's all I think about pretty much every day. So it just, man, it got to me. It riled me up. Uh, we could see th very visibly it had. Uh, can I ask, did you bring this up with your coach before the fight? Did he give you any advice? You know, we know James Krause is one of the best in the game, just about keeping your head straight and focusing on the task at hand. I didn't say anything personally about it, but I think he's known through this whole fight week that I've been amped up, amped up uh, coming into warm up. Like, we just got here and I'm. I was kind of overdoing it with a warm up, and like he's like, man, just just relax, just chill. He he's he's such a good coach uh, inside the cage, outside the cage, um, and he knows me so well that he could read. You know, he can tell my body language. He knows I'm I'm an emotional guy. I mean, I wear my heart on my sleeve, so he picked up on it easy, and um, and yeah, he 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 helped me work through it. But uh, it was still, it was, I was I was. A little bit agitated through the whole fight and uh you know the good thing about it is is that's something that him and i can go back and work on and um you know make those adjustments to where that that thing doesn't happen again appreciate it thank yes, you sir hey tim great victory thank just you. wanted to ask you something you came into this fight extremely confident you bet on yourself at the sports books how much richer are you because of that well i actually i brought my money in to bet and then uh, i didn't i didn't uh i actually didn't get the bet in but 
the thing is, is I, I bet on myself every day. Uh, this, this fight life, it, it's a gamble. I, I moved my home from Las Vegas to Kansas City to a, to a small little rental house where we didn't have any furniture. We brought one bag of clothes between my wife uh, and I and my daughter. Um, we did a training camp out of a, you know, a one room. We didn't have any furniture. We, we, our bedroom was our living room. We had a TV and a bed, and my daughter had a bed. Uh, we were looking for a house the whole time in Kansas City, so we bounced from Vegas to a small rental with no furniture. And then during this camp, we found a more permanent home and moved into that uh, and bought furniture. So this whole camp was, was really chaotic and, uh, and, and inconsistent. But the only real true consistent thing about it was, was my coaching staff, my, my wife, and uh, my team. Couple wins in a row. What does the pathway look like to fighting again for that flyweight strap? Man, I, I used to be the guy like, I want to get this, I want to get that, I want to, I used to be a, a reacher and, and so in goal oriented and uh, right now I'm just enjoying the ride. I'm trying to enjoy the process. Uh, this, is, this is the fun part, like taking the ride as it comes and, and I'm not worried about getting the belt or, or, you know, being the champion. Right now I'm trying to enjoy these small moments with my coaches and my family and uh, man, I'm just having, I'm having the best time. And lastly, does James Krause ever take a day off? Uh, I think he'll get to go home on Sunday and then back on Tuesday. So uh, he'll get to go to his second home back in Kansas City for a few days, and then he's back out here for Grant Dawson. And, um, you know, and then Gina fights, my, my fiance, she fights in a few weeks, and then I'm trying to get, to get right back out there. And, like, the sacrifice that he makes is, is you know, it's way up there. But uh, not just him, uh, his wife, Chanel Krause, like, she has to put up with, with you know, the 15, 20 other guys that he's coaching and, and being away, like, She's, she's the real trooper. Uh, I don't know how she does it. Congrats on the victory. Thanks, sir. Just a couple quick ones. I got to give you props on the, uh, the, the use of the fiancé and the Facebook. Is that the normal thing? Once you see a, a random message from a female, is it bringing the fiancé to read the message? Or did you read it and then you needed a, a second set of eyes on it? I saw that it was a long thing and that it was something like personal. And, you know, I knew it wasn't anything like, I mean, look at me. No, no girls are throwing themselves at me. <laughs> so one girl, <laughs> but uh, I, I knew it was something personal and private, and uh, I just wanted her to. I mean, she has access to everything in my life. She she handles all my finances. She's she, most of my phone calls. Like she, uh, I have nothing to hide. She's she's everything to me. So um, right away, I knew if it was something important, she would let me know, and like she let me know that it was important. So it was important. And lastly, you had an opponent come in that said that they already knew what you were going to do. They said, oh, I already know what the awkward Tim's going to do. I mean, what does it say to have these guys think that they already understand what you're going to bring, but they still can't go out there and stop it? I mean, there's no secrets in this game anymore. The Internet's out there, but, like, the, the level of training, it's not even level. It's, we're not out there working hard. We're working smart. Like, we're, we're finding things, and, and we're harping on those things, and those things are winning fights. And, uh, again, I'm – I'm 34 years old. I've been in the UFC since 2012, and my fight IQ is, is getting better every day. And uh, I still got a lot more to go and a lot more to learn, and, and that's what's making it fun for me again. And, and that, that makes me a scary man. Congrats on that. Thanks, sir.